what's up guys welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3d model this week we're going to be making an old cannon so let's get into it all right so to start things off we're going to select the cube and start blocking out the main shapes now i'm going to start off with the larger shapes in the scene and then we can move on to all the little ones afterwards so i'm going to start off with those pieces of wood basically the walls that help hold that cannon in place that way it's going to help me figure out all of these proportions and we can slowly piece all of these shapes together. Now this video is going to be similar to the previous weeks. Because I'm moving next week I don't have a lot of time so it's going to be more like a time lapse but I will however be jumping in here and there to explain some of the things I'm doing and I'm also going to go over quickly how I did those UVs. I know you guys have been asking me for a while to explain more on the UV part of the video so I will really quickly go over that when that time comes. Until then, let's just continue blocking out some of these shapes and we can start piecing this model together. I'm also going to just focus on modeling one side of this cannon, just because both sides are the same, just to save myself a little bit of time as well as save space in my UV map, I'm just going to model half of these wood panels as well as only two of the wheels, and once they're in their finished final form, I can duplicate them over to create the other side. As for the reference, there's nothing specifically I followed for this one, I just jumped on Google Images and found some random images of cannons, and I just picked little pieces of random photos that I liked, and I incorporated them into this model. So let's just continue on and we can finish blocking all of these shapes out.
So while I was looking at my Canon reference photos from Google, I noticed how majority of them had these kind of patterns on the back. Now I was originally planning on jumping into Substance Painter and just adding that design or some sort of pattern on the back of the Canon, but what I decided to do was add it directly into the geometry. So what I'm going to do here is just select all of these faces, make sure that I toggle the keep faces together off, and I can just extrude them to create some little squares that I can eventually smooth out to create some sort of indents on the back of the cannon. Now originally I made a bunch of these little squares or rectangles and it was looking a little bit weird so what I decided to do was just merge some of those vertices together so I can have larger squares. That way when I extrude them into the model I just have these like large imprints on the back and it just makes the model a little bit more interesting to look at. Anyways, let's just continue on and we can finish blocking these shapes out.
All right, so the cannon is slowly coming together, but as you can see, when I made those extrusions on the sides of the cannon, it started to make a little bump or some artifact on the top and the bottom. And that's just because I didn't add enough edge loops and polys that it's stretching those faces to create that extrusion. So all I have to do is just spend a bit more time moving some of those vertices around. And like I said, this could be easily avoided just by adding a few edge loops or extra polys in those areas before I did that extrusion. That way it just wouldn't be pulling those faces and I wouldn't be getting that weird bump. Anyways, let's just clean this area up a little bit and then we can move on to some other things.
All right, so the cannon is looking good. Next up, we're moving on to those wheels. Now, once again, my reference was really confusing me because there were so many different variations of these wheels. Some were all wood, some were all like iron, metal, and some were a combination of both. And I really didn't know what direction to go with. What I originally started with was just creating an all iron metal wheel, but I eventually changed this up and I just add some wood sides to it and then the metal just around the middle. So you'll see later on as I change that, but what I do for now is just start off with an all iron wheel. And a big reason why I end up changing this was after I applied those materials and I start looking at it in the renderer, it just looked a little bit too plain and I thought I could make it look more interesting and adding different variations of materials with the wood beside the metal just in my opinion made the wheel look more interesting. Anyways, let's just continue on and let's block out these wheels. Alright, so the main cannon shape is finished and it's looking pretty good so we can start moving on to some other little details. So what I'm going to start off with are those little metal straps that help hold this cannon in place as well as some little rings and hooks on the side. So let's go ahead and start modeling and blocking these things out. Thank you. 
Alright, so next up we're just moving on to all of those little metal rings. Now I don't know a lot about cannons and how they work, but I luckily came across this reference photo on Google and it really helped me figure out the placement of all of these things. So let's go ahead and start placing these little metal rings on the sides of my cannon. Alright, so the cannon's coming along and we're basically done, but I thought the scene was looking too plain. I thought since we're making good time on this model, I could spend a little bit more time adding a few extra objects to try to make it look more interesting. So while looking online at objects that are relevant to cannons, I ended up coming across a really great picture that had a box that basically had cannonballs in it, and I thought that would be a great idea to add to the scene. So what I'm gonna do is select a cube and I can start blocking out this box. Now I'm just gonna fast forward this part of the video since it's nothing special, it's just a bunch of different rectangles in the form of a box. But just to save time on this video, I'm just gonna speed this part up. So let's go make a box for all of these cannonballs. Alright, so our box is looking good. Now I thought we could create some little rope handles on the side. So I'm gonna go create an EP curve tool, draw those points in roughly the shape of that rope handle. And then I can turn that EP curve tool into a sweet mesh. Thank you. 
All right, so next up is creating those little metal bolts. Now I could do this directly into the texture just to save on polys, but I'm not too worried about that since it's just for the YouTube video and I thought it would make it look a little bit more realistic. So we're just gonna create a sphere, chop that in half and I can scale that down a little bit and then fit that onto our box. Now, rather than duplicating this a bunch of times and having to come back and UV it, I'm just gonna UV it right now. So all I'm gonna do is just a planar projection and then I can control U to unfold and control L to lay it out. And then I can move that UV shell to the side. That way when I duplicate all of these bolts all over my box, the UVing is just already done and it's just gonna save me a little bit of time. All right, so next up was the cannonballs. So very similar to how we did the little bolts on our box. I'm just gonna first make sure it fits inside of our cannon, that way the proportion's correct. And then I'm gonna do a planar projection to remove all of the cuts. And then using my 3D cut and sew UV tool, I'm just gonna make one cut on the bottom of my cannonball. And then I can start duplicating this a bunch of times, that way the UV's already done and I don't have to come back and redo that work. One thing I am going to make sure I do is slightly rotate each one of these cannonballs. That way when I apply that one material, since they're all using the exact same material, it's just not going to look like it's repeating and it's actually going to look like each cannonball is slightly different than one another. All right, and just like that, our box of cannonballs is finished. So next up is all of the rope. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna follow this reference photo I found on Google, just for the placement of all of these ropes since it shows exactly how they work. And then I can kind of follow this along for guidance. Now, really quickly, I'm just gonna duplicate those wood blocks we have on the one side of our cannon to the other side. We're gonna remove this when we come to the UVing, but just really quickly to help me position all of these ropes, I'm just gonna duplicate those objects over. So rather than making you watch me position all of these ropes since it's quite tedious, I'm just going to speed this part of the video up. But all I'm doing, similar to how I did the handles on our box, is I'm just creating an EP curve tool and I'm going to draw a bunch of points in roughly the shape of the rope that I was looking for. And then I can go edit all of these points and position them all over my model. Once I'm happy with the position, I can go turn that into a sweet mesh and then just slightly adjust those sliders depending on how thick I want that rope to be. And then we can just repeat that process a few times to create a bunch of rope. Now I thought it would be fun and also make the model look a little bit more interesting if I added a ton of rope. Just make it look a little bit chaotic, busy, and hopefully it'll make the model more interesting to look at. Now once again, rather than just pasting this rope all over my model, I'm going to follow that reference photo so it actually has a purpose and it looks like it actually belongs to the cannon. So let's go ahead and start making some rope. Now I totally forgot to actually model a metal hook. As you can see in that reference photo, it shows that rope tying onto a metal hook, which then hooks onto the little metal ring on my cannon. So we're really quickly gonna model out a tiny metal hook and then we can place that onto that metal ring.
same thing with the other end of this rope. There's this tiny little object, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it's like some little metal pieces that the rope actually wraps around and attaches to. So really quickly, we're gonna create those little pieces. We're not gonna think about it too hard. Make it pretty simple, since the rope's gonna be wrapped around it, you're not actually gonna notice it too much. But let's really quickly create this object and then we can continue wrapping our rope around it.
All right, so the modeling is finished and next up is moving on to those UVs. So I'm just gonna really quickly show you exactly how I do that. I actually use the exact same tools and process for all of my UVs on all of my models. I just repeat this for every shape. So rather than making you watch the whole thing, I'm just gonna show you with one shape, we're gonna start off with the wheel. I can show you exactly how I would UV that and then I'm just gonna repeat that same process for everything else in my scene. So let's get into it. All right, so to start things off, we're gonna select all of the objects in my scene and I'm gonna go delete history. This is just gonna remove all the unnecessary things out of my outliner. And then afterwards I can go in and individually click all of these empty groups and just remove them as well. Also, we have all of those curves we created for that rope. I'm just gonna delete those as well since we don't need them anymore. And then quickly look through my outliner to make sure there's no hidden groups and any unnecessary objects that we don't need. I'm just gonna clean it all up so we can have a clean slate to work with. All right, so usually I start at the top of my outliner, but just for this example, I'm gonna select this wheel and we are quickly going to UV it. So what I would start with first is just smoothing this object out since I want a higher poly model, I don't want it to look too low poly. And you can go in afterwards and double click all of these edges and just remove them. I like to clean up the models and remove those unnecessary polys since they're not really benefiting the shape. It's always nice to clean up things that you don't need. All right, so once I'm happy with the model, I can go up in my UV editor, and then I can go up to my UV tab, scroll down to camera base to do a camera base projection. And that's just gonna remove all of those cuts on my model so I have a clean model to work with. And I can go up to my 3D cut and sew UV tool, and I can start creating my own cuts. So all I have to do is right click, go to component up to edge, and double click on all those edges wherever I wanna create my own cuts into my UV. Now I try to always focus on cutting them along those hard edges never in the middle of faces so you don't see them on your textures. And I also try to make the least amount of cuts possible on each model. So once I'm happy with how that's looking, I can go to my UV editor, select all of those UV shells, control U to unfold and control L to lay them out. Now I forgot to freeze transformations. So if I go up to my checkered board, you're gonna see I'm getting some weird stretches. So always remember to freeze your transformations. That way when I go back down to my UV shells and lay them out and unfold them, it's gonna unfold them correctly. And now when I go up to my checkered board, you see I'm getting no weird stretches on my UV. Now it's always good to straighten your UV shells. So under the unfold tab in my UV toolkit, I can just straighten these shells out as well. And it's just gonna clean it up a little bit. So when I select all of those shells and I control L to lay them out, they actually are gonna fit a little bit tighter together. Now, it doesn't always work that great. It works great when you have a bunch of UV shells if you're automatically laying them out. In this case, since it's a smaller object, I'm just gonna manually move them around. And once I'm happy with how it's looking, I can select all of those shells and move them to the side. And then I can move on to my next object. Now, as you can see in this checkered board print, I'm getting a tiny bit of stretch around that edge, but to be honest, you're not gonna notice in the textures, so we're just gonna move on and I'm pretty happy with it. So I just basically do this for every model or every object in my scene. I just camera-based projection to remove those UV cuts, and then using my 3D cut and sew tool, I can go ahead and create my own cuts on the model and then eventually lay them out. So that's a process that I do. I'm just gonna do that exact same thing for all of these other objects, but I'm not gonna make you watch it all. We're just gonna fast forward to when they're all finished. All right, so here's a model in its finished form. I just continued doing those exact same steps that I told you using my 3D Cut and Sew UV tool, and I just finished UVing all of these objects. So what I ended up doing was breaking this thing up into different groups depending on how many textures were applied. So on the very first group, is the box and all of the cannonballs. In the second group are all of the ropes and the little objects that are attached to the ropes. And then the last texture and group is a cannon. Now I broke this thing up into two different groups. So the first group was a cannon as well as the wheels. And then the other one was the wood pieces, like all the frame and that little wood piece at the back. Now I decided to go with four different textures just to try to get the most out of these textures and the resolutions, but honestly you could have easily combined this into less textures. Like the box and the ropes could probably be one as well as the cannon just being itself one texture. So if you wanted to cut back for your video game or something like that, you could easily do that. In this case I wasn't too concerned about how many textures, so I decided to go with four. 
But that's exactly how I did those UVs. So now let's jump into Substance Painter so we can start texturing. All right, so now in Substance Painter, we can go load in our FBX file from Maya. Once that's loaded in and everything's looking good, I can go over to my texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps and choose your output size. I chose 2K and then make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh since we only have one mesh to work with and then we can bake out those textures. All right, so really quickly, because my box is one-sided and you can see through those walls, I'm gonna change my shader to alpha blending. That way you can see the inside of those walls in my box. All right, so now let's start texturing. So I'm gonna start off with my first cannon texture. I thought I should just start off with the cannon itself. And I'm gonna start off with that steel gun painted smart material. Now, a lot of these old cannons are actually made of iron, but I just thought the steel metal texture looked a little bit more accurate, even though they have some iron materials. We're just gonna use this one for now. And then I can always come back to it later and start tweaking some of those settings. Basically, all I'm gonna do is just focus on filling all of these empty objects with materials. And it's gonna help me figure out how those other materials are supposed to look. I personally always find this challenging just to try to dial in the texture right off the bat. Once you start adding in all those other materials around it, it really helps me figure out how that material is supposed to look and I can start dialing it in to look the way I want it to. So all I'm doing here is just applying different smart materials to all of these other meshes. And once again, I'm not trying to stick with the look. I'm just trying to fill everything in and then we can come back to it and start adjusting some of these materials. And as you can see, I did make those wheel adjustments. So all I did during the UVing process, is I quickly just duplicated that wheel to make a little inside piece where that wood is. That way I can apply different material to it. And I just thought it made the wheel look a little bit more interesting rather than making it all one iron piece. So let's just continue on. I'm gonna keep applying different smart materials to all of these objects in my scene. And once most of these objects have materials applied to them, we can start refining them and making them look a little bit more accurate to what I had in mind. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, the cannon itself was causing me the most problems. I really couldn't figure out exactly how I wanted it to look, and the more I looked online at reference, the more confused I got. A lot of the reference photos were showing it matte and pretty rough in material, and then other reference photos were showing it quite glossy and specular. So I was really torn with how I wanted it to look. I originally was going towards this glossy finish, but eventually I actually changed that. At the very end when I was doing those final renders, I just thought it would look a little bit better if it looked a little bit more matte. Anyways, I was playing around with the roughness values of this Canon for so long and I was just very indecisive. So I thought I'd just point that out now. Sometimes the easiest materials or the materials you think are gonna be the easiest tend to actually be the most difficult. Anyways, let's just continue on. We can finish applying materials to all of these objects. All right, so when it came time to add materials to my wooden box, I actually had a few problems. So I didn't really plan it out that well. Firstly, as you can see right here, I had an overlapping UV. I just didn't pay attention and I missed it. So I quickly have to jump into Maya 
just change the position of that one shell and then I can re-import it and then re-bake those textures. Secondly, when it came to laying out my UV shells, the orientation of those UV shells were actually quite different from one another. So I had some that were rotated horizontally and some that were vertical. So when I added that wood material, you can see a lot of those wood patterns like the grains and stuff were actually showing just different orientations on different wood planks depending on how they were rotated on my UV map. So that's why it's really important to actually plan out your UVs, not just control L and just lay them all out hoping for the best. Those little details can help make your object look a little bit more realistic and I just didn't plan them out that well on my UV map so it just caused me to spend a little bit more time in the textures when it came to applying materials to them. And then same here, since I use a sweet mesh for this piece of rope, it automatically creates your UVs for you, but it did the cut on the outside and I didn't notice that. So all I'm gonna do is jump back into Maya. I can just make the cut on the back end of this rope so you don't see where that seam is, and I can reload it in Substance Banner. Alright, so now all of our materials have textures applied, so now I can start tweaking things and adding a few extra details. For example, I'm going to add a few fill layers and I can go to my masks tab and I can start adding different grunge and dirt effects just to make these materials look a little bit more beaten up. One of the objects I really want to add a little bit more rust to is the cannon itself. I came across a reference photo online that showed a little bit of rust on the cannon and I thought it looked more realistic. So to do that, I can just add another fill layer and drag down that height slider. So that way, when I add some cool rust effect onto it, it's actually going to look like it's into the metal, not just floating on top. So let's go ahead and start tweaking some of these materials and we can start adding a few extra details.
Now I'm gonna quickly jump into the render to see how these materials are looking. And I can also raise that floor plane to match the bottom of my model. And then usually when it comes to this point, when I'm looking at it in the render, I can always spot a few things that I need to make small changes to. So once again, we're gonna jump back out into the editor and continue tweaking some of these materials. Now I'm just gonna speed up the rest of this video since I just keep jumping back and forth for a while. But rather than just taking this out of the video, I thought I would just leave it in and speed it up so you can actually see how much I jump back and forth. I always find the end of the model, once all those materials are applied, is the longest time. You can really spend hours and days just tweaking things and making those fine little adjustments. And those little details and those little adjustments you make, I find, make a really big difference in your final results. So let's just continue tweaking things until I get it into a place that I'm happy with. All right, so that's basically everything. That is the whole texturing, UVing, and modeling process that I did to create this old cannon. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. And just a heads up, I am moving across the country next week, and it's gonna take me roughly around two weeks to get there, so unfortunately, I'm not gonna be uploading any videos for the next few weeks. But once I get there and I'm all settled, I have lots planned. And if you guys want to help entertain me on my really long drive, feel free to send me any of the work or really anything you're working on over my Instagram. I really love seeing what you guys are working on. It really motivates me and inspires me to continue creating more content. 
So definitely send me what you guys are working on. I'd love to see it. And I really quickly want to just thank everybody who has subscribed and helped support the channel. We just passed 4,600 subscribers, which is just mind blowing. And I just really thank you guys for all the support. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.